We've collectively been a society of followers. Yo, 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 yo. Hello, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the We Outside After Work podcast. We don't have, (laughs) yeah, we don't have bomb drops when it's virtual. But we're going to get them soon because we're working on our our editing. You know, we're going to add some kabooms in there. I got you. We? 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 I'm going to help you. (laughs) No crusading, but it's all good. It's all good. Okay. All right. Well, I'll wait until you help us. I mean, help me. But yeah. Welcome back, guys, to another week of recording with us. And we'll be back in the studio next month. But for the month of October, we are virtual. So today is just me and Erin. So y'all know how these go, solo dolo vibes. Solo dolo. But yes. you know, you, I feel like you'd be missing me when we don't do our studio sessions. So I might have to just come out there one of these days just to make sure you feel like you are loved by your co-hosts because you be, you know. I like, check in with you like every other day. I know, but it's it's just something different about not being in my presence every single week. Like, okay. <laughs> That's how but, you feel. But, but when we are alone, we like to do a check-in. So I'm going to let you start. So let's yeah. check in. How you doing? For my check-in, I would say today was like the first day that I felt like my normal self, just based off of all of the health issue things that I've been going through as far as like family stuff and just mentally feeling like I just wasn't where I needed to be or like my normal everyday person kind of vibe, which makes Mm -hmm. sense because when you're going through like life changing things that other family members are dealing with and you're just there to support, It's a lot on your mental health. So today I was back in the gym. I did a lot of stuff as far as like trading. And now we're recording the podcast. And I also had my organization meeting right before this. So yeah, I'm feeling good. And I did my hair as well. So it's a little puffy. Late to the gods. Is that what they say? What? Late to the gods. Do they say that? I don't know if they still say that, but it's a little puffy because this one, right, like that I got in is called uh, Kinky Straight. So it's supposed to be. Yummy, yaki, Remy. No, this is supposed to resemble your natural hair as like a black woman. Because when we straighten our hair, it's not silky straight. It's like a little poofy because of humidity. So this is what it looks like. And I kind of like it. This is the first time I'm. Shout out to humanity for keeping our hair nice and poofy. Humidity? Oh, that's what. (laughs) <laughs> my bad, you know I'll be hearing you. We on a different connection, so I think you say humanity. My bad. I know humidity, but yeah. So also, I do feel like I am a dog whisperer. Okay. Yes. So since my mom has been home, and after she's done with her surgery, like I've been helping out to walk her pit bull. She's had this dog for, I want to say over five years like she got him when i was in college and this dog was a rescue and he was like a fighter dog so it took like a police dog no like he was in dog fights oh like michael Vick. yeah and she like rescued him because they were gonna put him down because he was very violent i don't know what possessed her to adopt this type of dog but nonetheless his name is boo boo as well and now he is older and much more calmer. And this is the first time that I'm ever, I've ever walked him. So yeah, like he's listening to me. Sometimes he'll pull away when he sees another dog. But yeah, I mean, we have a connection. We got a bond and that's my check-in. Well, shout out to you and Boo Boo. You know, it's good yeah. to see Me you. and Boo Boo bonding. You and Boo Boo <laughs> over there bonding. Um, for me, my check-in is honestly real simple. Um, I finally left my job. Um, I'm going to become a full-time podcaster from here on out. <laughs> you fucking <lame. laughs> I wish. When the money comes, when the money comes out. Yeah. Um, well, we sponsor. Corporate is... We, we waiting. Y'all just come hit us up so we can get this money. You know, we, start, we don't want to play no more. But um, 
yeah, my last week of work was in, in, interesting to say the least. Um, mm-hmm. I do give them a huge shout out and appreciation for um, welcoming me on my exit in like a really positive way, you know, just like, hey, anything you need, anything you want from us, if you want to stay, well, you know, roll out the red carpet for you. So it was mm-hmm. kind of like refreshing to know that like I do have a place to go if for whatever reason this job does not go the way that I want it to go. Now, mm-hmm. y'all need to know where I'm going to be at because I know y'all like to be nosy and y'all like to pop up. I don't want nobody popping up for me. Who likes to pop up? And people be crazy. The like, co-workers? Like our co-workers? Popping up. Um, seeing me in, in the supermarket, like, yo, that's the guy from We Outside at the work. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. It only happened once. No, it did not. It did. It. I swear. Did it really? No, it didn't happen. But I'm talking into existence. All right. <laughs> I'm speaking into existence. But um, speaking of that, I went to Target the other day. I never worked at Target. I don't know what you're talking about. I know. I just went to Target. And you know how they have the Starbucks area? So I was leaving and I saw somebody from um, college that I didn't know lived in this area. And they looked at me and they smiled and they was like, oh, hey. And this was right before homecoming. They were like, oh, you're going to be at homecoming? And I was like, yeah. No, like it was pouring raining all day. I was not going to go. No. Anyway, like. I think they just recognized me from Instagram because it was someone who like we never actually like we had similar friend groups, but we never talked like face to face in person. So it was just random. As you well. know, that is kind of like interesting, though, because it's like people that you didn't really speak to on a everyday social basis at school, high school, middle school, college, work. But they see you online and they know everything about you. Like, yo, keep it up. Keep doing great. Like, this is a legit podcast conversation. Like, I didn't know y'all even watched my podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that that is true. Like, I've gotten DMs from people that I didn't even know watch and was like, yo, this is a great episode. Like, keep going. Yeah, like, let's go. They see, yeah, they see our clips, though. Like, the reels that we make, and we're collaborators on both, so it'll be on our timelines. And people do see that, even though they may not like it. Because the people who hit me up, they did not like the post. So they see good. we work we working on our people, you know, feed the algorithm from here on out. F T A. Feed the algorithm. Get us out there, you know, we try and get these sponsorships, try and get this money. Yeah. But back to yeah. my check in because you know she be trying to jump in and join. Sure. Um I'd be trying to relate. It's okay. I got a I got a couple more days until I start. Um okay. training is a six week process. So we're gonna see how this goes. Um all optimism being um, very, very positive thinking. Um, I, I want to ascend to new levels and heights in life. And I want to I want to really, like, make myself proud. You know, I, I mean, I remember we talked about it with, um, what's, what's can- Cannabis Check? What's his name? Um, Mar. Marv, yeah. We, we talked about it with him. Just, like, being proud of ourselves is just a new level of excitement for me. So let's get to it. You know what I mean? Let's get to it. Speaking of getting to it, your, your girl been wilding on the internet. That's not my girl. That's your like, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I actually just seen a post on Baller Alert before we started this. And just to let you guys know what we're talking about, we're talking about Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada. I just realized that was in your background. Wow. It's been there for the last couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. So she's been in the news a lot lately. She's been on a bunch of reels and clips promoting her book, but just talking a lot about her marriage slash separation to Will Smith and just the different things that they've dealt with. And also her, I guess, expressing her um, love still and different aspects of her relationship with Tupac when he was still alive. God rest his soul. If she is worthy, and we need to give her her flowers. If she is <laughs> a, a transcendent individual, yeah. And today's societal, just culture and this whirlwind of all this just news, Jada Pinkett is a trendsetter. And instead of everyone jumping in and trying to dim wait, it, we gotta get down to the details, though. Like, which clip are you talking about specifically? Because there's I'm talking about everything, everything that she's done 
since her relationship with Tupac in the 90s, to her relationship with Will, to her parenting, to her doing music, to her alopecia, to everything about Jada Pinkett is buzzworthy. It's very authentic, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's kind of like she doesn't, like, she's not really, she's not sugarcoating anything. And I feel like she, she'll wait until things die down before she speaks about it. Because one of the clips that I've seen recently, today actually, was when she talked about the slap, right? Like the Oscar slap where Will Smith slapped uh, Chris Rock. And the thing that she was most surprised about was, and this is all quoted from her, like this is not me making up shit. This is what the, the clip said of her saying that she was surprised that Will Smith referenced her as his wife when he, mm -hmm. um, he told Chris Rock, keep my wife's name out your mouth. And allegedly, right? Because we're going to use that word as well. Well, we don't have to. She said it. Yeah, she did say it. Okay. This is all like paraphrase right now. So, yeah, she was just like, she was surprised because they haven't used those words in years because they've been separated since 2016. So, my thing is, like, I do commend her on just being so unfiltered and authentic, right? But then it's also like, okay, some things I feel like don't need to be publicized, but then they do because th when things are done publicly, like the slap, right? Mm -hmm. It's good to have like some backstory of where that came from. And another thing that I read or saw today was apparently when Chris Rock found out that they were separated before the slap, Tried he tried him. to yeah he tried to ask Jada on a date and that's where like the frustration came from Will Smith as to why he was so angry and he slapped Chris Rock. You know, I think a lot of this is more so because it's salacious than anything else. It's like we know that this is news, so let's get it out of there, right? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't give a fuck that. Chris Rock asked Jada out on a date. We shouldn't give a fuck that Will Smith haven't referred to her as his wife since 2016. We shouldn't even care that they're separated. But the problem is we do. And that is the beautiful part of this whole story, right? Is we are hooked. And as much as people want to go on the internet and say she needs to stop telling her story, get us out the group chat. You still <laughs> reading it. You got your group chat on um, Do Not Disturb. But, you but it's like we can't avoid it, though. Like, for me speaking from the devil's advocate side, like, I'm I'm not following Jada Pinkett. I am following Will Smith. But I'm seeing this on Baller Alert, um, mm -hmm. Spiritual Word. Like, these are things that I just follow because it is a news outlet. So I do feel like because when you are a celebrity, there is a level of... Um, there is a level of privacy that people feel like you don't have. So in her case, I think like now she feels comfortable talking about it. Cause I don't know when her book came out. Cause she just, I don't know if she just wrote a book, but all of this press is around her book that talks even more in depth about all of these events that happen. So yeah, I think it's just her finally feeling comfortable coming out, telling her story. I don't think there is a well, table. I don't think it's her comfort. So what I do you think she, it is? I think she's more than comfortable to talk. She had a whole TV series on Facebook with her just talking. So I don't think her being uncomfortable. But the tab Red Table Talk was based around other people's problems for and the most part. It was, but it wasn't like this specific. Like, actually, they had an episode where she interviewed Will Smith, right? Mm -hmm. Which I didn't watch, and I don't remember. That's why his eyes is all red. Yeah, and there's mad memes about it, but I don't remember what the point of having that conversation was. It about the slap? It was or about like... August Alcina. Oh, right. that was when all that all that came out. But yeah. you know, you said something really important, right? That you follow certain things, okay. huh? As I, as I always do. Oh, yeah, no, it was the first time I ever referenced that. <laughs> um, but you said something about following certain things like spiritual word and ball alert and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But 
because I know you, I know a certain people that no matter what, you don't give a fuck about. If you see Krishan and Blueface, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to scroll right past no, the shit. That's why, that's why I unfollow the Shade Room. Because but it seemed you, like Krishan and Blueface Shade Room. Like that was literally... Won't pay that oh, in mind. Won't. You don't even want that into your algorithm. You don't want that into... You don't even want to know about them. You probably didn't even know the girl had a baby. That's how much you don't want to know about them, right? But it's not about what we want to know. It's the people are continuing to peddle and push this information. This is Kardashian shit. Like, no matter how much you try to avoid it, you're going to know that Chloe and Lamar had another baby. So like, it's going to know this shit. I, don't even I would just I would just say, like, in the society we live in right now, like in 2023, it's based around drama. It's based around, like, different um, controversial topics and, like, even relationship drama, like, as toxic as Blueface and Krishan Rock are. And like, to be honest, it's very sad. Like it's a very, very sad situation just to see and just to see how much publicity they get, which apparently I found out recently that it's even worse on TikTok. Like TikTok is with like all the videos that um, are at. But I can't, I can't really judge because when it comes to like 90 Day Fiance, like that's my shit, okay? Like they got a new season out I'm watching and I'm not gonna lie, the episodes where it's like most crazy is the most entertaining and it's the most like wow factor and like what the fuck and I can't believe this is, it's real life, right? But it's entertaining. So with 90 Day Fiance, they got so many different versions of the show. Like they have the other way around. They have before the 90 days, 90 day fiance singles. And then some of the couples will get spinoff shows of their own. And it's one of the most popular show on the TLC network because it generates so many views from people just tuning in and wanting to see the drama. We so I just that. like, Sorry. yeah. And that's where like the whole, um, the followers um, concept comes from because it's like the more people share their personal lives and their stories, the more people will view, right? And that's why everyone wants to be a content creator now. They want to like not have the traditional nine to five job because that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, how I feel with like corporate. But I do think people are more accepting to taking the content creator route than the corporate route just based off how much money they see people are getting but i do feel like clout or attention is worth even more than money nowadays but i think it's more than clout i think crash tv in particular is what people generate to right we've all grown up and took drama class and shakespeare is what I never we took drama class. literature english lit uh, grammar, whatever, the English class, whatever the class is called, you learn about Shakespeare, right? Shakespeare wrote about tragedy. Romeo and Juliet, tragedy. Othello, tragedy. Hamlet, tragedy, right? They yeah. want to bring you through this rocky ass story where uh, it's so much drama and just destruction. And at the end of the day, it's no happy ending. People love that shit. Yeah, we like fairy tales too. We like to see somebody go through things coming of age, but it's all drama based. It's all give me something to sink my teeth in, give me struggle. People love to see other people struggle. It's kind of ridiculous at, at, as you think about it. It's like, oh, we're we're so sad for Will Smith, but I want to know what he thinks. We're so sad for their kids, but we want to know what they. Did think. you see what he posted today? Yeah, because he's not sad. <laughs> He don't, but also too, and I realize this, I want to say like, because he don't really post that much on Instagram, but it's it always seems like he's on like an adventure. Like he's out the country, like he's somewhere away from the drama. And then the fact that he posted today, he was on some random ass boat. His caption was notifications off with a smiley face. To me, that kind of just solidified that he don't really give a fuck. Like, he gives a fuck, but he doesn't give a fuck because, like, for the most part, when you're not online, too, like, when you're not constantly checking comments and shit like that, like, you put your phone down, you're living your real life. Like, 
people who's commenting on your shit, any negative stuff, you don't know them. So let me continue to live in bliss and live in happiness in my real life than online. And I feel like that's what he does. And I think we do that to an extent as well, especially when we get when we get posts or reels that'll go viral. And usually when that happens, we'll get an influx of negative comments. So then it gets to a point where like, either I'm not checking the shit all the time or I'll limit the comments because all you see is the notifications and I just don't like seeing notifications. Like I don't really I don't care. I don't like seeing notifications either. And, I, and the thing is, it makes me want to respond to stuff when I see it because I don't like seeing it. It's like, now you done got me involved. Now you done, like just... But when it's like a hundred plus comments, mm -hmm. you can't respond to a hundred plus comments. Well, over the last couple of weeks with me on my transition out of my job, I've had a lot of free time mm -hmm. <laughs> at work knowing that I didn't necessarily have to work. So they got a good bit of me because I was giving them just a whole lot of engagement. Now, I wasn't being... I saw, I saw your comments, which... You know, you did respond to a few that you could, but mm -hmm. this is when like it was still going viral, and it was like every minute we're getting people's opinions, which are usually the same kind you of video. Opinion. Yeah, but Instagram, yo, I, I'm this close to just calling Mark Zuckerberg again. Instagram don't really fuck with us, but which I don't I understand mean. why they keep doing that to us because we ain't do nothing to nobody, we ain't say nothing crazy. That's why I feel like we need to get on our TikTok wave. So I know you run the TikTok. No, I've been working on it. I did five videos this, this last go around. Yeah, you've been doing well, but I think what I'm going to do too is like the same energy that I've been putting into Instagram. I do want to shift it to TikTok because I feel like um, the just the algorithm and the shadow banning that Instagram does isn't as prominent on TikTok, at least like from what I've seen. So I just want to test it out. So the one thing that I've been noticing from our TikTok is older videos are starting to get a little bit more traction. Okay. So, um, like that the damn um, daycare video. For whatever reason, they won't stop commenting on that video. Really? Yeah. Um, and then the one I, where you told uh, about checking phones. Mm -hmm. like, that's another video that people keep trying to come on and have conversations with. So it's like, it's good that TikTok keeps things going and an old video can pop off or they can do stitches and different things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's like, why y'all, why y'all trying to mess with us? Like we, we ain't doing nothing in the world. I mean, I think again, that's society nowadays. That's the culture where like, you're going to get the influx of hate. Right. And then the most, wow factor comment is going to get the most likes. And so I feel like people, they're always trying to have that comment that's like, oh shit, so they know that people will like it. At least for me, like I've had plenty of times where I'll comment on one of these news outlets, Instagram pages, and I'm not even commenting for like a wow factor, but I'll comment as if like it was me talking mm -hmm. to a friend kind of shit. And I'll get like all the notifications of people like your your comment and it'll be like over, I want to say like around a thousand likes or whatever. So I feel like people, they're looking to always do that now, but in a negative light. I try, I try to offer as much valid opinion as possible. I don't want to criticize every time I jump onto somebody's um thing like tonight's conversation I, I like to leave comments on there because i know they want to they want to talk right so there was one time though yeah it was one time i jumped on a comment and i kind of took the woman's side so the dude who was in the video he was on some fuck you like like you just engage in the conversation you don't have to be an asshole about it like but then again it made me realize like okay this is the same premise that I would have on my, on our page. Like, all right, somebody's engaging with us. We don't have to be an asshole to them. Now, every once in a while, some people warrant being an asshole too. Like, you want to be a dickhead, I can be a dickhead. I have no problem. Um, For me, like, I'm not arguing with people online, like... Uh, but it's fake. It's <laughs> fake. It's fake, number one. But at the same time, for me, like, I'm just speaking for me, as I always do. Even to comment something negative, like, trying to call someone out their name or like mm -hmm. really explain in depth something which from their comment usually they don't 
understand from the beginning. It takes so much energy for me to like get down to that that competency of like dumbness. <laughs> And I just, I can't, like, I just be like, okay, I'll just delete all the, um, I won't delete it, but I'll just like not respond. And if it's negative, I'll delete it from my notifications, but I'm not deleting the message. Cause I'd rather not see it on my profile, but it'll, it can stay there. I don't I mean, care. I'm like, I'm like Jada. I feel like I'm going to express myself. I'm going to tell all that I feel like telling, you ain't yeah. like it. but this is my brand of expression. We talked about, um, Married at First Sight when we did our live show and the one girl going and doing um, all these Facebook messages. I'm watching a new season. Oh, oh well, Don't tell me nothing because I ain't watching it yet. Um, but she was going on Facebook. It's the one when they was on the island. I didn't see it. So. Okay. You get a chance to watch it. Um, but for those who don't watch Married at First Sight, the girl would go on Facebook. She would write statuses about their relationship. And a dude that one. wouldn't like that, right? Yeah. But at the same time, if this is Jada's way of getting her shit off and feeling that she is fulfilling herself by expressing herself, let her. We don't have to consume the content. So if this is what she wants to do. We don't have to, but it's so much. Like It's, it's, it's her story. I want to see in one day, I probably, like just today, I've seen probably five different news outlets post about something she said. But you know what I think it comes down to from these, from these news outlets? They're looking for the wow factor, right? Like that we just said, like something that'll spark controversy or like, I feel like people already know that the relationship with Will Smith and Jada like is public, is very like unconventional to say the least, right? So I think these news outlets, they already know that people are going to have an opinion, mm -hmm. right, on their relationship. So they're trying to find clips that will be like the clickbait and like put it out like, oh, she said this about Tupac. Oh, um, I saw something where like they related on an alopecia level, which I feel like was kind of disrespectful. I think that was that. fake. <laughs> Okay, I hope so because I'm like, what the fuck? But that's my point. That was something that like sparked people wanting to put their input. Like, yo, this is crazy. So, but a lot of it is is based on like even when we do our reels, we do our reels based on clickable hashtags, right? What has mm -hmm. a million clicks on it? What has a billion clicks on it? Whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. These companies are doing the same thing. And Jada Pinkett is click material. Mm -hmm. So if she's getting 23 million hits every time you put her name in it, I'm going to use her every single time. I'm not going to use things that aren't going to get any news. Oh, a kid just um, overcame cancer, right? He's ringing the bell at the children's hospital. We don't get none of that. Like, right. we don't so, get so no positive news i feel like people don't want to hear it it's it don't generate buzz yeah but i think at least from what i realized with these news outlets there's like waves of topics mm -hmm. i feel like there will be waves of positivity then there'll be waves of negative shit. Then there'll be waves of controversial stuff. Like right now we're in the negative controversial wave. Like we're more so, to me, I feel like we're in the distraction wave where we obviously have bigger issues going on where like there's literally so many industries on strike right now. Healthcare, um, automotive. Um, I don't know if we... <laughs> yeah, what Walgreens falls on the healthcare. Because it's mainly like the, the pharmacists, too, who are on strike. But it's like, where are these conversations? Like, these are things that are affecting society and, like, households and families and them feeling like they're not getting paid enough, let alone, like, they want to come to their job. But we're getting an influx of clips about Will and Jada's stuff. Because it's not real. It's not. It's distraction. It is very much. But at the same time, it is some real things that even though it's not technically at our doorsteps, they know how to propagandize it enough to put it at your doorsteps, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say we shouldn't care about what's happening 
to the Palestinians or the Israelis and different things like that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't care, but they know just the right trigger words or trigger visuals to make us give a fuck. When there's turmoil here, right? Like in the United States, we have so many things like fucking student loans popping up too. I'm getting so many emails and- and <laughs> so ignore emails. Them emails. <laughs> Listen, I'm not paying nothing, but that's, yeah, that's neither here nor there. But like, why? Like, I understand this is a big war, which is starting to abrupt and all of that. But when I constantly see it in the news, especially when we're getting up to election year, right, next year, for me at least, like, I pay attention to the little things that they're doing and they're putting in place, right, as a strategy for them to make it seem like either they're coming to help or they're doing something, uh, momentum. Is it momentum? Monumental. It's monumental. Yeah, they're <laughs> you're supposed to help me. I didn't know where you was going with it. I didn't want to stop you. Though. But they're doing something monumental to make it seem like, oh, whoever this this person running or politically will come save the day or like do something to help mm -hmm. foreign things that are happening. So it's just very strategic to me. And I just be like, and I see it. And I just wish there were more people who didn't spend their time arguing in the Jada comments and clips and spent that energy with shit that actually mattered. But I don't think a lot of people have range for that because we have those conversations too. And then it gets to the point where now we're picking sides and people don't even know the facts behind it. And then the facts that you do have might not even be facts because the internet is full of misinformation. So it is. The easiest thing to do is fall to the gossip because gossip, you don't need facts. You need to have feelings. Yes. And that's another thing that bothers me with this generation. It's like, and when I say generation, I'm just talking about everyone in different generations in mm -hmm. 2023, right? Like we have so much information at our fingertips. You can look up for yourself, but they'll usually go to the comment section of a social media or a TikTok, right? Because everyone swears everything on TikTok is solid information. And like whatever they're saying is true, which is super false. Like it's spreading misinformation as well. But how do we know that? We know that because if you actually do some fact checking based off whatever you're looking up, you'll feel more reassured to where it's like, okay, this stuff that they're telling me, mm -hmm. yes, it's true. But people, they can't just pull out their phones and based off their own point of views, right? And their opinions, that's what they're giving. Who's to say they're fact-checking everything that they're putting out? But well, people, people take that shit as like a Bible and like, oh, TikTok said that? It must be true. I've had mm -hmm. friends tell me that. And I'm like, you sure? And they're like, yeah, it was on TikTok. I'm a firm believer in don't trust any information. And I'm not saying that from a perspective of be stupid, but... Even let's go to Kyrie Irving for a second. And we're not trying to get canceled. Um, the information that he was given for him to think that way to him came from a reputable source. Now, the opposing view is Wait, what are you talking about exactly? Like the whole from Negroes, from Hebrews to Negroes or whatever okay. the video that he watched, okay. right? Okay. Or Nick Cannon when he said what he said for, and then the Jews came and blah, blah, blah. Um, Information that we are given isn't fact checked because there are no um, peer review sources to make sure that that's factual information. So if you look back in history and you say, oh, this is peer review, other people corroborated this information, that makes it a fact. It well, we can say a lot of things, especially there's one particular book that is very popular. Are you talking about the Bible? In the... <laughs> In the religious world, that has been re revised plenty of times. But again, it's based off whoever is revising its opinion. My issue comes where like people just have one sole source of like whatever they say, this must be it. And that's also what I feel like has happened with TikTok, where it's like, oh, it's on TikTok. Oh, it's true. And 
I think like there's a lot of other reputable sources online on Google where you can like literally go on your phone and like Google whatever you're trying to look up and find it. But it goes back to like, are people actually going to read the shit or they like a quick little 45 minute clip or a 20 second clip that makes it seem like, oh, this information is factual. I just don't trust any of it because you can easily sway the masses through technology. You can, I feel like people are followers, just like as like. But they've always been. As, right. That's what I mean. Like from the beginning of time, like it, they're followers. And I think social media just made that like super apparent because you can actually follow physically like the person that you feel like is someone worth following. I, I'm, I'm going to push back on that only because we are talking about religion in a vacuum here. We're not, oh, I'm not talking about religion. About, we're not actually talking about I don't religion. want to get canceled. <laughs> but <laughs> the whole premise of religion in multiple different sects is followers, like a following or a fellowship or all those <laughs> things. Like, yeah. literally, you have countries built on Christianity, countries built on Islam, countries built on Judaism, countries built on Hinduism, countries built on Buddhism. Like, this is a, we've collectively been a society of followers. And I think the easiest way for us to not be in this brainwashed society is to break off of that and establish some science. Well, I'm not saying don't be a follower. Like, I'm not saying it's don't wrong. Be. It is wrong. I'm okay. saying it. I'll say it. All right. I feel like there's levels like you should still, you know, take what you feel like is worth looking into, but still have your own opinion, like mm -hmm. still have your own um, identity with. I don't even want to talk about religion, but just your own identity for like politics, for example, mm -hmm. like do your due diligence to look up those politicians or whatever. Don't do it based off like, I saw this one post, I seen a couple posts where it's just like, and this is just political, where I think it was like Waka Flocka posted about Trump mm -hmm. for 2024. Mm -hmm. And then on the Breakfast Club, there was a clip where Sexy Red was talking about why the, why the hood mm -hmm. loves Trump. And to me, it's just so frustrating because number one, the people that you're looking towards for political advice. advice, these are not the people that you should be looking towards for political advice. Like these entertainers, they have big platforms, they have big followers, right? So for you to switch that into your political view and put your political view onto them, I feel like it's very dangerous. But that's not what they're doing. It and is. Hold on, hold on. It is I, because I, don't, I, feel like, I don't think that's what they're doing. I think no, let me say what. Let me tell you why, because um, on today's episode on The Breakfast Club, they had Angela Rye on and yes. she was given her view of why um, that can be detrimental to Sexy Red's followers. So she yeah. was given the backstory of like why Trump is not someone who you should she just a be video thinking. about it. Yeah. So my thing is like, you know what? I'm not going to explain the way I want to explain it because... Yeah, like it's it's very controversial, but I just feel like the people who listen to it's her controversial. I know, but the people who listen to her faithfully though, like are we do we really think that someone who's constantly listening to that that level of music isn't going to be swayed by her personal views as well, even if she just said, "Oh, Trump is bomb." People are going to take that and run with it cuz like they're they're faithful followers to her, regardless if she's just known for music. But this is important because of what you just said. You've been saying a lot of important things today. Shout out to you. Um, you. <laughs> people are uninformed. Even the people who are giving influence, they're uninformed, right? So Sexy Red may very well believe everything that she's saying. It's not her fault that she's influential, right? If people want to follow her, 
It's not her fault. It's not her fault. But I do feel like when you realize your platform, right? Like she was on, she's around a different level of celebrities now. Like she clearly has a huge following on Instagram. Like you have to be accountable to some degree because I feel like, you know, you have a huge following now. And when you have a following, like why, why are you not accountable for misleading your followers? But she's not misleading anyone. She's speaking her truth. I, I'm a firm believer in authenticity. If Sexy Red is getting on whatever platform she's getting on and being her honest, authentic self, no, I, I think not that. I think that's then that's like your fault for not being informed to put out political views, knowing the climate that we're in. Like you have to have some news. level, like living in a America, you have to have some level of awareness of what's going on. But according so to what like she, to say, I feel like that's an excuse though to I say that so. oh she doesn't know oh she she like. It's okay because that's her views. Because at the end of the day, she now has a different, she has like a lot of followers now, for right? You. Not for me, like that's in general. We can go ahead and see right now and look to see how many followers she has. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for you, that's how you would feel about her influence. For her, she doesn't necessarily have to feel that way. And so, I think like you're just okay with being ignorant. But I don't think it's her being ignorant. I think it's her. I didn't say her being ignorant. That's not my words. Um, I said well, whoever abides by that is okay by being in their ignorance, knowing that they have that level of influence from two people and then say some political comment like that, knowing we're about to be an election year and knowing the state of the fucking country right now. But a lot of people feel the same way that she feels, though. And part of that is... When we look at a political perspective, and this is not a political conversation, by we're not trying to be political. Is a but conversation. Here. <laughs> and this is really, really important when it comes to the yeah. conversations, even like someone like Jada is having. People are specific in what they hear and what they transmit, right? So when we talk about politics and voting, a lot of people vote per policy, right? Like I'm a, I'm a three party, not a three party. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm a a three policy voter, whatever it is, like abortion, uh, guns, and Black Lives Matter. Those are the only things I care about. They don't give a fuck about everything else that's on the ballot because that's how people vote. So Sexy Red's thing is- And that's the problem. That's my thing. I know, I know. But I'm saying that is the problem. Like We get so frustrated in the climate that we're in but you can't say you're not into politics when literally everything we do on a day to day is based off politics, like your, your kids' education, right? Um, how much wage you get? How many ta how much taxes get taken out of your paycheck? Like everything is based off politics. So to some degree, like you just said, the three policy rule, like those are things you care about specifically. But I do feel like you have to you have to just care about something. You can't just live in this country, which is a d democracy, and not give a fuck, fuck about nothing. And like, oh, I'm not voting for nothing because it's not a democracy. Like, what? It's not a democracy. Either way, though, like we still have that option of voting, and I feel like when it goes back to the conversation we had with um, Rashad. Mm -hmm. about the unity right like we feel like even just based off relationships there's no unity so how are we supposed to come together as a collective to make decisions as far as like politicians and stuff when it comes down to the fundamentals of mm -hmm. relationships we can't even agree on that that's why i'm a firm believer in individual perspectives and sovereignty right Rashad talked a lot about sovereignty and jada is talking a lot about individualism and what is what is the like what does that look like in the long run like well, sovereignty you king and you being the only one on this pedestal and what other people are below you no everyone else is on their pedestal that's how I see it. Like if I'm going up and you going up and you going up, we all going up. I'm not looking down on you. And we're all in individual areas. Like that doesn't work as a collective as a whole. Because how everyone can be a king on top when like we need to come together and like actually have conversations together and as a group come to a uh, consensus where like, okay, let's do this as a group. Let's do that. Like you can't have like a whole bunch of kings 
and everyone is like, no, like my my idea is the best one. Like, how do you come to a resolution? But that's the earth right now. How many kings or presidents or prime ministers do we have where we got to figure a way to work or we don't and we start bombing each other? And we, I think that's what we're currently dealing with, right? But I think we would be in a much better place if everyone was able to do and build up self, build up community from self. Yeah, build up self. I think a lot of people that's, like- That's where I think we need to be. And everyone can't be a king. Like that is something that we've realized, right? That's just how people are. Like some people feel comfortable. Like that just goes back to the conversation with being a business owner and being a corporate worker, right? Like not everyone has the mental capacity or even wants to be a business owner, right? Yeah. And like be that king and in charge of their life and like how much money they're making. Some people like that stability of being a follower because at least like you have a set structured day and time of when you get paid and like yeah you got to follow the king's rules but at the end of the day like you still feel more secure and stable you know what that reminded me of what the spider hyenas <laughs> did you watch the video tell the people nah did you watch the video if you ain't watch the video i ain't telling people you brought it up so you gotta tell them you tell them cool. the video. <laughs> all right so first and foremost spotted hyenas are like my new favorite animal they are like super duper impressive and they are one of the most communal uh groups of animals in the animal kingdom uh, one of the fiercest packs even more fierce than a pack of wolves and a pack of lions the trick is they are female led most other packs are male led so they have like an alpha woman and then it trickles down in a very very tiered structure uh, to the point where it's real cutthroat in the spider hyena family, right? So the the top woman, she has to find a mate. And in order for her to mate, it has to be the toughest of the, the, the men. But none of the men are really in the pack because the pack is dominated by women. Like this is feminism is like spider hyenas because it's- Wait, it's where are spotted hyenas in Africa? Africa? This is from um, Lion King. Okay. So, as Whoopi Goldberg was a spider hyena. You see, she was in charge, right? So, but it's crazy because they actually have like this, it's like a penile clitoris. So their vagina actually looks like a penis. It looked just like a man's penis on the coyote side or hyena side. It's crazy. So <laughs> they're so they're so dominant as a part. Yeah, they're so dominant as a woman that a male hyena can't even rape them. I'm sorry, grape them because they would have yes, to. Now. Yes, they would have to retract their clitoris internally just for them to procreate. These hyenas are also so strong that their babies struggle getting through the birth canal. And if they do come out, they start fighting the other cubs to see who's going to be the strongest. It's crazy, right? All of that was in the video? All of that was in the video. Oh, I didn't watch all of that. You got to watch it. It's intense. But this is why women can't run the world because y'all going to be like spotted hyenas. Just everyone's going to be trying to get to the top. Oh, let's, let's not put that narrative out. It ain't going to be no sovereignty. It's going to be, I'm going to be the queen and you going to be my. No, I think like, why not give. I think we're at a point in time where like there's just so many changes going on mm -hmm. and what that looks like politically is kind of like having a woman president. I would love to see what that looks like. What difference would it make? I mean, we've only had like all men presidents since the beginning of time. So I don't know what it would look like, but like just based off like a man and a woman, like clearly there's two different um, genders, number one, and different perspectives because a woman's perspective is a lot more nurturing for the most part, right? And it does come from a, at least for me, like I feel like we think for the whole, like for the family. What, what is happens if a woman is put into a position of masculinity? Is she going to continue? I to feel like we're already here. Like, in the state that we're in, we like women are 
already at a point where we have to take masculine roles. Yes. And I don't want to make this a man and woman, like gender, masculinity and femininity conversation. But just in the past few years, like there's a lot more women who like they have to be the breadwinner or they have to go to work and take care of the kids. And they're doing the same same amount of work as the husbands or the boyfriends, but they still have to be the nurturer and the mother. So like we've already been shaped to do that. So in a leadership position, I feel like would be a great idea. I do think that there is some hyper masculinity involved in those positions though. Like, like what? When I have women managers, they don't always offer nurturing and the feminine traits. A lot of them try to be hard. They try to, you know, be aggressors. They try to show off that they have a position of power. Like they probably are trying to show leadership that they're just as that's, that's, no, I'm saying they're just trying to show leadership, like higher ups, that they're just as equipped for this position as a man would be. Because I've heard this too, where like, let's say, for example, there's a man manager and a woman manager, right? And they both had a hard day or like they both want to voice their opinions. When a man voices their opinion, it's like, oh, he's a strong, great leader. He's thinking for the collective. But when the woman manager does it, it's like, oh, she's a bitch. Like she probably got her period. And they're trying to put all these like other things based on biology against her when it's like, no, she feels the same exact way. She wants to voice her opinion. So I think like just people's perspectives of women, like we're just seen differently just based off like who we are biologically. Yeah, because you are exhibiting masculine traits to a lot of people and that their opinions. If you and a man gives the same kind of a speech and it's, it's looked at I from a man coming off very masculine and then well, you do it as a woman, it would be uncomfortable. It's based off just years of oppression being a woman because there was a point in time where like we literally couldn't have a job. We couldn't drive. Right. We um it was like, cause even my grandma told me stories where like you had to be married. Cause that was another reason why like our grandparents and before then got married is cause you had to be at a certain level, have a, a certain level of the relationship where like, okay, you could get a bank loan. Oh, you're trusted to do this, this, and this just based off you being married. So I think like we've had to go through so many things to get to where we're at now. And this is just, Unfortunately, it may be in a negative light, like how some women show that. Not all of them, but there are some out there who feel like they have to be more masculine to prove that they're worthy. But on the flip side, I don't think that you need to lose your sense of femininity in those roles either. Just like I, as a man, if you go into a role and you, as a manager, right? I can't go into a room and be ultra sensitive and ultra passive and very conservative and concerned. I just can't do it, right? My nature is I'm I'm compassionate, I can listen to you, but I also have to give you some kind of a stern feeling. You gotta understand that a man is behind this this conversation. I can't do the same thing that a woman does in those spaces. As warm and as wonderful as I can be, I still gotta give them, all right, this is me putting my foot down. Like, you have to feel that from me. It's like a dad versus a mom. And I feel like women can do that, too, once they're given the opportunities. Like, I'm talking about specifically a president. Like, we just have never had that up until now. I, I'm, I am a male feminist, whatever y'all want to call it. I'm sympathy here, according to the Internet. I'm completely on board with women in positions of leadership. I'm not on board with women in positions of leadership in a masculine way. If you are going to lead, lead as a woman. That we can agree on. It's like the movie Woman King, right? Lead as a woman. Yeah. You don't, have, you don't have to prove that you are more of a man than another man. Fighting is not that, right? Fighting is, is skill. It's not, I'm bigger and stronger than you. It's not I'm more skilled than you. So it's not masculinity. But you know certain traits. So as you say, live in your divine feminine. And y'all can lead everything. Yeah, don't feel like you have to change yourself to fit in these spaces because you are 
just as equipped just the way you are. Absolutely. Same goes for y'all, fellas. Y'all are just equipped just the way you are. And for those who don't think that you are, I don't know how to tell you. you know? All yeah. right, let's get into our happy hour. Because it's uh, late. It's late. It's like... Almost 10 o'clock. Yeah, 8 o'clock. No, it's 9.55. I've done so much today, like, I'm exhausted. Um. Okay, what's your happy hour moment? Uh, my happy hour moment. Um, <laughs> you know, it's crazy because we do this every week. I feel like I should be thinking about this. But, you know, my happy hour moment is honestly just reset. Just getting my brain into a new focus, studying, learning, being um, the best student that I can be for the next couple months. Because I feel like that can never be turned off. It can only be um, heightened and enlightened. So I'm taking all that. Um, I had a conversation with Tiffany recently um, and we just talked about inspiration. Mm -hmm. And because she always leans on me in ways where it's like, I never thought that I can inspire anybody, especially not somebody on their way to millions of dollars, right? Um, but it made me really realize like who I am in terms of being inspired and being someone to inspire. So, um, that's my happy hour moment is just continuing to be inspired, continuing to try to make it to the next level so we can see some good things in this world. You know, I want to go and visit Greece for like seven weeks and just be turned up, you know? Not seven weeks. No, but honestly, like, I feel you on that. I just want to get to a space where, like, if I want to take a vacation for about a week or two, I can do that without thinking about, like, my financial situation afterwards or, like, PTO, Rent, yeah. fuck this rent shit. Now I can pay my rent, yeah. but yeah, I don't, I don't pay nobody's rent. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind rent, but I definitely rent, if right? were to pay a mortgage. So ownership is definitely mm -hmm. in my near future. Um, yeah, but my happy hour moment, I would say, like I started at the beginning of the episode, just feeling more like myself. Why you got the red light going? Because it was getting sentimental. You was getting into your happy hour moment. Not the red light. You got to do like a yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, blue. I like blue. I have I have the the color changing light bulb, mm -hmm. and blue is like my mellow vibe. Greens, purples. I'm gonna put you on with my with my with my home girl. She's gonna get you with the frequency sounds and all that shit. Like I got you. She's supposed to come on, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, she could talk more about it. But let me get back to my happy hour moment. Yeah. So yeah, today was just like a really great day for me, just feeling more connected to myself again, considering the past few weeks that I've been going through, just being a support system for my family members that have been going through a lot of health issues. Um, but I would say just going back to the gym and getting back into my trading endeavors, like that's really helped. And just like setting my intentions for the, the month, not just the day, but just like the month, the week. I got a lot of positive things coming down the pipeline, uh, career wise, as well as um, maybe in my love life. I don't know. We'll see. Because that's always been. New Bay? Who this? Well, it's always just been on the back burner, but I want to say like, not on the back burner, but like it was never like top priority recently. But yeah, I think like recently I've just been putting a lot of things into perspective and thinking about people who are big impacts in my life and people who like I want to talk to when things happen, right? Like when positive things happen, negative things happen, like people who I can call for that. So yeah, like just a, just a lot of like reconnecting to say the least. Yeah. So you gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone else wants to reconnect with Dana and I or connect for the first time with us, you can always join this middle seat that's not in this camera frame right now. Yeah, there's only two right now. And that's by hitting up W O A W pod at gmail dot com. Um now you with the lights flickering. Like that, right? I was practicing earlier because it's blue and blue and pink. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The light aesthetic. I'll be working. You extra. <laughs> I like it though. 
I like it because I definitely don't have none of that over here. No, I mean, because last week my, my, my lights was a little bad. My eyebrows is disappearing. I have. Did you get your ring light? Yeah, yeah, I got it right here. Shannon Sharp, I was looking like, so it was looking crazy, you know. Yeah. Um, and I don't like looking crazy. I'm trying to be guapo, feel me. Okay. But with that being said, <laughs> With that being said, we outside and we out. Turn your phone off. Bye.